This use of play is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello This is the Barbados Today morning news update for Thursday, October 22nd. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Retired trade union leader Dennis Clark is speaking out against the planned takeover of Banks Holdings Limited by foreign investors. Among those bidding for control of BHL are the St. Lucia based SLU Beverages Limited and Trinidad's and Samakal. Clark says it would be nothing short of a sad development if the current bid was successful. He says he also fears the impending move would lead to further retrenchment in the private sector at a time when the country is already grappling with high unemployment. In, in most hostile takeovers, you'll see that there's a downsizing. They, they hide behind the word efficiency, uh, you know, and, and therefore you're going to find that that is what is going to happen. Again, I would hope not. But if I look at the pattern across the United States and Britain in those places, I, I fear that that uh, is what might occur. I don't want it, but I say that's a fear that I have. Meanwhile, the private sector says there is no need for doom and gloom over the proposed BHL takeover. Chairman of the Barbados Private Sector Association, Alex McDonald, says it is simply a case of business as usual, and it is not likely to trigger any major ripple effects in the short term. But president of the Barbados Economic Society, Jeremy Stephen, is suggesting that Ansa McCall's move to challenge the SLU's bid is unethical. On closer introspection, one has to understand that um, Ansa McCall's motives aren't entirely and would be considered in more developed financial markets unethical. And the reason why is the fact that it is seemingly going to form a regional monopoly or at least have a very monopolistic uh, monopolistic hold on the market. You remember they have their own drinks brands, mm -hmm. Stag and whatnot, if I'm to remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And then to have our brand here in Mount Barbados, which also has considerable a considerable reach in the OECS and a very big one in Guyana, ironically, outside of the, the bank's product itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pahil Dairy products are very, very popular in, South, in Guyana and from what I understand, a bit in Suriname as well. So, it seemingly is a very monopolistic um, move, a uh, very hostile kind of takeover. In other news this morning, as police investigations continue into the disappearance of St. Philip resident Marcel Smith, her family is suggesting that she has been abducted. The 75-year-old Smith has been missing for a week now, and yesterday evening her family issued a second public appeal for help in finding her. Her daughter Tanya Smith says while they are holding out hope that their mother is still alive, they believe she is being held against her will in an unknown location. Please continue to help us in this capacity. We've been thoroughly impressed with the Royal Barbados Police Force and the job that they're doing on this case. Our mother Marcel Smith, wife for 55 years of retired Lodge School Headmaster Ori Smith and sister-in-law of Sir Frederick Smith is still missing. She is a strong, formidable woman. Our father is unwell and he is fully dependent on her. She has been missing since last Monday night. We have an accurate timeline and evidence of the crime that has unfolded. We are holding out hope that she is still alive, but being held against her will in places unknown. If anyone has any information, please contact the police or Crime Stoppers. One regional think tank executive believes Justin Trudeau's new liberal government creates the prime opportunity for the Caribbean to advance relations with Canada. On Monday, the Canadian electorate handed Trudeau, the leader of the Liberal Party, and the son of the former Prime Minister, Pierre Trudeau, an absolute majority in the first change of government in a decade. At the same time, they handed a stunning defeat to the outgoing Conservative Prime Minister, Stephen Harper. The executive director of the CPDC, Chantal Monroe-Knight, says the win is a good sign for the Caribbean. That current 
Firstly, CARICOM and Canada um, are in negotiations for a trade agreement. And there has been a little movement. The process has been extremely slow. Um, and it is hoped that, again, with this change of government, the Liberal government, that we will see from Canada a more um, facilitatory position that will allow the process to move forward. Certainly, um, what we see with the previous government um, is a government that completely moved away from any kind of development or true development ethos, um, I, would, I would suggest. Um, um, and it really had taken a very, very hard line um, in, in, in their relationships with the region. And again, hopefully this new government will take a different approach and we will see actually a return um, to the kind of clean relationships that we have been accustomed to in the past. In sports, West Indies women now lead the four-match one-day international series against Pakistan women 2-1 this after beating their rivals by 109 runs at the Bosajou Stadium in St. Lucia last night. West Indies women were sent into bat and made 281 for five in their 50 overs. Pakistan women, meanwhile, made 172 for nine in their innings. The fourth and final match will be played on Saturday. There's regional and international news after this short break. In news from the region, an election observer mission from CARICOM is in Haiti for the first round of presidential elections and the second round of legislative elections this Sunday. The mission was requested by the government in Port-au-Prince. It is led by Dr. Steve Surujbali, chairman of Guyana's Elections Commission, and comprises 11 members. Members of the team are expected to leave Haiti next Tuesday and Wednesday. 53 presidential candidates are vying for the support of the 5.8 million registered voters. The second round of legislative elections will be a runoff for seats in the lower house and the Senate in Haiti's 119 constituencies. There is more criticism of the Guyana government over its decision to raise the salaries of MPs and ministers. One NGO is adding its voice to the chorus of protests from trade unions and civil society groups condemning the move. We get more in this report from Capital News. Non-governmental organization Red Thread is calling on the government to withdraw the salary increases announced for ministers and members of parliament. Today, Red Thread held a picketing exercise outside of the Ministry of the Presidency. According to Karen D'Souza, in the interest of transparency, all the figures of the increases and allowances should be made public. We are of the view that, that one, there is not enough transparency on the issue. So, for example, we've seen some figures in relation to the salaries that will be paid to ministers. We're not happy about that. But what we have not seen, uh, so that we can get a complete sense of the fortunes that will be paid to the government, we have not seen the allowances and the, um, you know, the figures that those allowances will get to. At the same time, be saying that a public servant or anybody else can live on $50,000, which is the minimum wage, but the ministers can live on half a million dollars. What, what does that say about us? You know, so, so they, they got to turn this thing upside down. This is not about the ego of ministers. This is not about ensuring that, uh, you know, this minister is getting as much as his title deserves. It's, it's not about titles and an entitlement in that sense. She said the president's announcement on the matter does not answer their concerns. President David Granger said the decision to raise the salary for the ministers was not a reckless decision. Over to Europe now where the flow of refugees and other migrants continues unabated. The Greek island of Lesbos is said to receive 7,000 new arrivals per day 
and the UN is warning that the total for this month could be more than 200,000. This poses a huge challenge for Greek authorities and the UN, as we hear in this report from the BBC. If you thought this crisis was easing, look again, as one young man from Syria abandons a boat whose engines failed and makes a last gasp effort to reach safety, Europe and dry land. For the last two days, we've seen an endless stream of dinghies. Thousands are pouring onto the shores of this small Greek island. Exhausted, hungry and relieved. The world's attention may have waned, but the pressure and the pain has not. <laughs> thousands and thousands of people have landed on these shores just over the last few days. There seems to be a sudden rush of people. That's partly because the weather's changing and so the seas will rise and the opportunity to reach dry land and Europe is starting to close. That's the news. There's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. You can catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good morning.